I would talk about PCAST, and people would look at me like, what in the hell is he talking about? Um, and then I'd explain what I meant. And uh, we uh, it wasn't particularly active uh, in the last four years, but uh, um, science is back. <laughs> back in vogue. And I want to welcome everyone here today uh, with me and the President's Council on Advisors on Science and Technology, so-called PCAST. But first and foremost, I want to thank the co-chairs, Dr. Lander, Dr. Arnold, and Dr. Zuber. Um, you know, and the entire council, all of you, for your willingness to serve. You know, it's no secret that I'm a big fan of this council. I would say parenthetically, I used to, when we were in the, in the, uh, the Obama administration, we'd have our meetings at PCAST, and we'd be down in the library, and, uh, and, uh, and we'd make the presentation. I'd say, can I stick around and ask a few questions? And three hours later, they'd be pulling me out because I had uh, so many questions. But, you know, I often say that America can be defined, and I mean this sincerely. I was in... I was in on a Tibetan plateau with, I think that's where it was, with uh, President uh, Xi of China. And um, absolutely true story. And, uh, and we had been traveling, uh, I traveled 17,000 miles of them here in the United States and then in China. And President, uh, the President wanted me to get to know him because we knew he would be the next president. And President Hu was then president. And, uh, and But it wasn't appropriate for the President of the United States to be spending all that time with the Vice President, so I spent a lot of time with him. And uh, we had a lot of conversations. Uh, I, th I think, I don't know that's true, but I'm told I've spent more time with him in person and on the telephone than any other world leader. And we were, uh, we'd have these conversations. I have an interpreter, and he'd have one, simultaneous interpreting. And we'd talk, and we'd have all these meetings. And uh, as I said, uh, we were sitting there, and he said, look to me, he said, can you define America for me? And I said, yes, one word, possibilities, possibilities. Like any other country in the world, we're, we're, we're just, we're organizing the notion anything is possible. And that's the very spirit that this animates this council. Your job is to ask how science and technology can expand our possibilities solve our toughest challenge and make it impossible, make the impossible possible. This year, we've seen the power of science and technology deliver extraordinary breakthroughs, from the miracle of safe and effective COVID vaccines and treatments to game-changing clean energy technologies, helping us meet the climate crisis, although we have a long way to go, while creating new jobs and new industries. And, uh, you know, to the flight of the helicopter on Mars, and the launch of a new deep sea telescope that was going to help us unlock discoveries yet unknown. It's essential that science and scientific integrity are again taken seriously and at the center of what we're about as a nation. That scientists have a seat at the table, every table in the government. And that's why this council, to me at least, is so important. But I think it's going to be so important to the United States and to the world. You represent the top of your fields, medicine, mathematics, astrophysics, agriculture, oceanography, public health, clean energy, cybersecurity, nanotechnology, and so much more. The breadth of this council isn't an accident. It's by design. And that uh, — there was a time when PCAST didn't include social scientists or medical doctors or, frankly, the voice of women. But today, we understand that to harness the full power of science and technology, to meet the challenges we face, we need to hear from every part of the scientific community. And that's why I'm so proud that for the first time in the history of this council, we have a PCAS that looks like America. And then I'm looking forward to hearing from our co-chairs about the work we're engaged in, particularly, particularly around uh, addressing the disparities in our public health system, meeting the threat of climate change and extreme weather, ensuring Americans' uh, global leadership and innovation and and create a good paying job with, and win the competition of the 21st century. And so, so that's what this is all about, in my view. So, Eric, I'm anxious to get started, and I apologize for taking so long, but thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'm looking forward to seeing all of you in person as we uh, get this COVID issue a little more under control. So, so thank you very much. Well, thank you, Mr. President. I think what we're going to do is thank the press very much right now and ask folks to step out. And for folks watching by Zoom, it'll be another you know, moment or two, and then 
we'll pick up as, as folks collect their things. Thank you all so much for coming. Sir, can you say declaratively the election this fall will be legitimate? Thank you. Okay.